If you're like me and you completely forgot what happened since my last Japan vlog, don't worry, I got you, here's your recap. We went from Tokyo to Hakone to look at all the beautiful nature sites eat so much delicious food, I'm still craving it just looking at it, enjoyed some onsen and then moved on to Ghibli Park, enjoyed a little bit of time there and then moved on to Kyoto where we're now. Day one started with a kimono rental and I do want to shout them out. They're called Kiwami Fujinoka and they've been nothing but absolutely sweet for the entire process. I of course got their allowance to film this and I was so shocked how intricate the process of getting dressed in kimono is. There's so many layers, there's so many different wrapping techniques and I would have absolutely failed doing this on my own. So thank you so much to both of them. And I really think this is such a beautiful way of kind of paying respects to the culture and really seeing it for what it is. And I absolutely enjoyed this entire process. Kyoto and... Oh, hi everyone. Today I'm in Kyoto and as you can see, I got dressed up in kimono as well. I think this outfit is really beautiful and I love what they did with my hair. I'm just gonna give you a little tippy turn amongst the sakura here and I'm now going to enter Gyan district and see how that very old and traditional part of Kyoto looks like. Let's just say past makes does not know as much as current makes because this is not Gyan. This is a Sakura street that's close to it called Shirakawa Lane. And we even saw a hero on, which I thought was so in point after the last Ghibli movie. But you can see lots of brides and grooms here taking pictures for their elopement. We went through Gyan and I really tried to not take as many pictures of people that are walking around there. We actually found this lovely temple called Senkyo temple and amongst these sakuras you see these old architecture styles from Japan which I just think was such a nice serene scenery that we got and I really really enjoyed that. After that we ventured through the rest of Gion, looked at some more of the other temples. The hole you're seeing in this little building is actually for good luck if you crawl through it. Uh, and we saw a couple of people try that as well. And then from there on, we took off the kimono and went to the Kyoto National Garden, which obviously was also blooming in Sakura. You can see all of the people enjoying it. And you also have the old palace there, which you're looking at here. All of the walls are up and everything was closed. Unfortunately, it wasn't open when we went there. And then we had some dinner alone. Welcome! Day seven started with breakfast in bed. And while I struggled with getting this bowl to open, I really did think that that was such a cool idea to just bring the breakfast to the room and then you can enjoy it on your own with any other people. Um, this day was all about Fushiminari, which is a Shinto shrine. Make sure you read those signs, really important when traveling abroad. We are going to be starting at the bottom of the mountain where that head temple is. You can see that there's lots of foxes that's because Inari is known to use those foxes as messengers. You'll be seeing them all across the mountain area as well. And then those red Tori gates that you walk through when you travel this mountain are all donated by people and companies and the red signs actually tell you who donated which one. So it's a really cool thing to see. And I thought it was so beautiful, so serene that I want you to also enjoy some of the scenery here and I'll come back once we've made it a little bit further. Hi everyone, so I'm currently on the top of Mount Inari, at least I think I'm close. It's not quite clear on how the passage actually works. So we've been walking for I think an hour 
and so far it's really beautiful. I captured a lot of scenes uh, and we even found a tiny little bamboo forest. But yeah, we have a little bit more walking to do and a lot of steps. So <laughs> if you cannot hear it, I'm a little bit out of breath, but this view is definitely beautiful. We have Kyoto right behind us. It's a super, super nice overview of the entire city. And we get a lot of like crows that are flying by and it's quite nice really. Atakade mosquitoes. After that short rest, we made our way towards that top and while the roads get less traveled by other people, there's still so much to see and it is kind of nice to be alone on the roads. But finally, we did make it towards the top and it looked like this. Yeah, exactly. It's just a sign that says top and signs, there are many at Fushimi Nari. One of them you just saw, it says to be aware of monkeys and boars. And I don't know if you know that about me, but I'm terrified of monkeys. So while the sun set and it looked really beautiful to look over Kyoto, I was scared about making it down this mountain in hold. So I was happy we had a little kitty friend helping us downwards. And eventually we did make it there. After walking that entire hiking trip, I thought we deserved a little bit of a treat, so we did go to a Wagyu Katsu place. And I know most of these are tourist traps, but this one, I swear it was so good. It was such a fun shop with lots of young people working there and they all were super pleasant. The food was delicious and we even found lit up cherry blossom trees right after that. Here at Toji Shrine, which is a big Buddhist temple that serves as a protection symbol. And I just thought it was so beautiful how much effort went into making this an experience for people to see. And as you can see, there were lots of people and even even some animals enjoying this scenery. Speaking of temples, here is where we're headed next. Koya, or also called Koya-san, is a mountain that nestled in, well, the top area-ish, has loads and loads of temples that you can even stay over and overnight. But the travel there is quite a long. You have to take station after station and then take the cable car up to the mountain area then check in with your personal temple for us it was this one and then that's where you're going to be served food you're eating the buddhist diet and you're also sleeping like the monks do on just normal futon we took a little bit of a walk after we arrived up there before we went in for our dinner and how i felt about sleeping on a futon you are going to be hearing in our next episode.